<laughs> You're in some reading. Well, our eyes process the words. Sometimes we may experience of hearing our own voices or reading those words in our mind. And uh, this inner speech based on literature could uh, influence people's reading speed, um, count readers to access word meaning, as well as facilitate some higher order comprehension. Um, two recent studies have found that um, eye movements of readers can be modulated by the uh, speech rate as well as the direct, uh, direct quotation during standard reading. So, for example, readers will read, I finally find my keys uh, in the direct quotation uh, faster after they read, John walking into the room said quickly. Then they read, John walking into the room said slowly. And this phenomenon is called perceptual simulation. That is, readers mentally simulate the characteristic of the character's voice during silent reading. And the fun have found that this simulation could affect eye movements. And uh, if they could affect eye movements, I just wonder, is it possible for them to perceptually simulate the non-native speaker's voice while reading? And uh, why are non-native and non-native speech are interesting here? Because Because, like many previous studies have found that um, native uh, accent in speech could influence people's comprehension. By listening to accent in speech, um, listeners may experience comprehension or processing influence difficulties due to the unfamiliar voices. And also, but some other researchers argue that actually accent speech could increase people's comprehension by drawing listeners' attention. Some social study, social attractiveness study found that people are always great, not only the speaker's voice, but less favorable, less friendly, and less trustworthy. And here, we, we use two eye-checking experiments to specifically explore the following four research questions. Um, first, we would like to see how does perceptually stimulating non-native speech affect people's reading speed? And then, how would that affect their response accuracy? And then, if this perceptual simulation impact, impact uh, exists, how would it change across the reading process? And then last, we will compare two experiments to see if there is any difference of perceptually simulate, simulating a non-native speech during silent reading versus um, just normal silent reading. In experiment one, uh, we develop a new paradigm. So what, what we do is um, readers will first listen to two recordings, one read by native speaker and the other by non-native speaker, and then they will read some sentences. And the, before each sentence, the picture of the speaker will show up on the screen, and they will ask to imagine the, that speaker is reading the sentence to, to them. So the speech impact here is not they are listening to some like audios, they are actually read by themselves while imagine someone's reading the sentence to them. And the, we recruited 80 native English speakers from the UIC community, and the four passages with uh, within five hundred words and the, the similar difficulty were used as the text to uh, help them uh, uh, familiar, uh, familiarize with the speech. And uh, after the first block, they will, we will play another two speech, one read by native speaker, the other by non-native speaker, to help them to refresh the memory of the native and non-native speech. And uh, the design of the experiment is a two by two by two design. So we have we manipulate the plausibility sentence structure uh, as well as the <coughs> speaker effect. And uh, here actually is a picture we should use that as a primer. So sentence. And uh, we purposely choose the uh, plaus uh, manipulate plausibility and the sentence structure because based on literature. Uh, uh, a sentence with object relative clause are usually harder to process. 
And then we just wonder if the dynamic speech, perceptual simulation of dynamic speech, would interfere, like, make the process harder or easier, or maybe no different. So, and after each, each sentence, uh, they will answer a paraphrased verification question. Um, so the sentence for this is the bird that is warm or small. And uh, then they need to judge if this sentence is the same meaning as the previous one they see in the direction. And the answer for the second sentence are always yes. So here is an example. How to conserve energy in an office. Number three, eco-friendly packaging materials. And then you will see a picture of either native or non-native speaker. After that, you will see the trick point, read the sentence, and then answer the question. After the eye checking, uh, eye checking part, uh, uh, participants were asked to uh, answer two social attractiveness uh, questionnaires. One was the native speaker's voice, the other two was non-native speaker's voice. And the 13, uh, I think 13, yeah, certain variables were included, uh, such as like accent, intelligence, reliability, as well as pleasantness of voice, which you will see there in the result. So, what are the results? Uh, we analyzed the whole sentence reading time, and uh, we found that. For sentence structure plausibility and the speaker effect, speaker effect uh, significantly influence and uh, influence the sentence reading time. Uh, participants tend to spend longer time in the, uh, with the implausible sentence compared to plausible sentence, and uh, they spend longer time in the object relative clauses compared to the subject relative clauses. Also, for the speech effect. After they see a picture of non-native speaker, which is a Chinese speaker's photo, they tend to spend, spend much longer reading time than ours, right? which are native, after they see a picture of non-native speaker's photo. Also, we found uh, a significant effect of item presenting order. So, here, here is their 48 target sentence and the, their presenting order. And you can see there is a tendency of readers tend to spend less time in the later part of the experiment. And the, I think everyone knows we call it practice in fact. People get used to this type of question and they just get faster. And here comes the most important part, like the perceptual simulation effect. Remember, like we have two blocks, and before block one, they listen to two audios, and then they take a break, and before block two, they listen to another two audios of native and non-native speech. And you can see that there is a decrease in tendency overall as like the child order in fact, but there was a huge jump of like the differences between the native speaker and non-native speaker the native and non-native speakers reading time after they hear the um, they, they hear the two new recordings again. So their memory was refreshed. And uh, how can we validate these results? What we do is we pull out the second half, second half items in block two and view the in their this uh, master model. And we found that plausibility, sentence structure, and trial order, they are significant predictors. While when we pull out the first half items from block two, we found that in addition to those three main effects, there is a strong speaker effect for this part. So we think the story is, as the time goes on, 
uh, their memory of the boy is just decreased. So the perceptual stimulation in fact decreases. That is why you can't see any speaker effects in the later part of block one. But after they were refreshed, uh, they were reminded of the voice, the speaker effects just jump back again. Therefore, we conclude that perception simulation effects did exist. And uh, the, this effect would decrease as the interval between the audios increased, and uh, the effect was strengthened after the brief familiarization with the native and non-native voices. Now here is the accuracy data. So we build like um, logic. Um, it's a model um, here. And uh, we found that sentence structure and the plausibility are significant predictors of accuracy. So <coughs> readers tend to have significant higher, um, tend, to have, tend to answer the questions more accurate. Uh, in the plausible, in the plausible and the subject relative clause condition conditions, and the speaker effect effect is just a marginally affect their accuracy. So I think it's smaller than 0.1, but it's bigger than 0.05. And uh, non-native speakers' voice yielded a lower accuracy than native speakers' voice. And there is interaction between the plausibility and the sentence structure, which is pretty ob obvious from this graph. And here comes the survey results. So for those variables in red, they are significantly different between native and non-native speakers. So as you can see, Participants rated non-native speakers um, for significantly lower on um, comprehensibility, accent, speed, reliability, confidence, as well as pleasantness, dependability, and uh, likability. And we just wondered how this social uh, how this uh, social attractiveness variables could affect their reading process. And uh, then we use those significant variables, we put them into the model to predict the non-native speaker's speech. So we plot items that, that, that is like they saw the non-native speaker's sentences after they saw non-native speaker's voice, uh, pitch photos. And we found that um, reading, uh, they are rating on reading speed is a significant predictor of non-native speakers' whole sentence reading time, and that is negative, negatively co correlated. So when they rate the native speakers' voice speed higher, they tend to have a, they tend to have shorter reading time, which which actually replicate the perceptual stimulation effects that perceptual simulation of certain voice would modulate your reading speed. And then we found confidence is positively connected to the reading time. So the higher they rate the confidence of the non-native speaker, the longer they would spend on the sentence. Then we also use these significant variables to predict their reading accuracy. And we found that accent was significantly related to the response accuracy for non-native speaker and uh, so when they feel their the, when they feel their uh, the, the non-native speaker has a very strong accent they tend to have much lower uh, response accuracy and when they think like the non-native speakers are uh, the speaker is highly reliable or dependable they would uh, have lower accuracy as well. And uh, then we, we the, then the question was like, why this is happening? Like, um, some people may argue that they uh, may argue that like the longer sentence reading time after non-native speakers' photo was just caused by reading more carefully. 
like maybe they are less trustworthy towards the non-English speakers. So when they imagine non-English speaker is telling them something, they spend longer time to think about it and uh, also to make decision. And also, we found that it matches with like a good enough interpretation theory, which is when the sentences are very difficult, and the readers are tend to use like the shallow, plausible, lexical level semantic information instead of like the deep semantic info, uh, syntactic information to get the meaning of the sentence. But but that, that interpretation actually is not faithful to the real interpretation of the sentence. So our for conclusion for experiment one is when people perceptually simulate the non-language speech, um, that would significantly modulate their reading speed and then impacted their uh, comprehension. And perceptual simulation in fact decreased over also the experiment as the member of the voice decreased in readers' minds. And the uh, reader spends more time reading sentences when the non native speaker's confidence was higher and made more mistakes when they felt the non native speaker was highly dependable. Then we just wonder um, what, what would people do in normal reading. So we use the same sentences in experiment two, but this time without, without direct quotation and there was no audios, no speaker cues like photos of a non native speaker. And uh, all the materials are. All the materials are the same, just the conclusion marks, and then we recruit another 40, 40, yeah, 40 English language speakers. And the results found that sentence structure, plausibility, and their interaction significantly affect the reading time. This is the same as what we found in the oh, the interaction. The interaction actually was different, but it replicated many previous studies from, did by like Gibson or Chesler on subject relative clauses and uh, so readers spend longer time in the impossible condition and in the ORC condition. For the accuracy, um, seen, uh, the pattern was similar, so sentence structure and the plausibility is significant affect accuracy. And the uh, readers tend to have higher accuracy in the plausible condition and the subject relative uh, clause condition. So our conclusion is that in normal reading, in normal silent reading, readers just process the sentence faster in plausible condition than in plausible condition. And uh, the subject relative clause condition yield in less reading time than the object graph process. Um, then come to our fourth research question, that is, is there any difference between perceptual simulating maybe either native or non-native uh, speech uh, compared to not simulate any voice at all? So what we do is we pull out the target sentences after the native speaker's photo and compare them to experiment two's target items. And then we do the same for items after non-native speaker's photos. What we found is, is that when people are perceptually simulate native speech, sentence structure, plausibility, speech, and the item presenting order uh, are significant uh, factors that predict their reading time, and they tend to have longer reading time when they are not perceptually simulate any voice. And uh, for the non native speech, uh, this is a graph. So, uh, no that actually yielded longer reading time. And for non native speech, it's the similar pattern. So even when people are perceptually simulating non native speaker speech, they tend to have less time when then they are not perceptually simulating any voice. 
And then we look at the accuracy data. And for the accuracy data, it turns out that when you perceptually simulate non-native speaker's voice, you have a higher, much higher accuracy than you just uh, read normally. And uh, we have uh, pretty obvious you see on the graph. And uh, the red one is for not perceptually simulating simulate any voice. And then the blue one are you are perceptually simulating the non-native speaker's voice. Native speaker's voice. <laughs> And surprisingly, so we found the symptom pattern for the non native speech as well. And uh, still very significant. The graph patterns are even quite similar. So, our conclusion is that perceptual, uh, perceptually simu uh, perceptual simulation of non native speech does exist. And uh, when you do that, you will spend all your reading time and have higher accuracy compared to your perceptual simulation of native speaker's voice. And the uh, perceptual simulation of either native or non-native speech could uh, increase sentence reading time and uh, lead to a higher accurate uh, responses and uh, facilitate a deeper sentence processing. Yeah, I'd like to say thank you, my advisor, Christmas, and my lovely team has some Thank you. Do you have any questions? Um, so if, if I understood correctly, so if my comparing um, when I when supposedly they might be simulating in terms of you know, the speech of the speaker versus just reading and, and not reading that it's uh, anything that they do uh, native or non-native that they do better when they are they or well that they're faster. Yes. Um, they are faster so they are perceptually simulating what folks native and non-native speech. And compared to not perceptually simulating any speech. And I was wondering what conclusions or, or what rationale you attribute that to. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's for a good, good question. Because recently I was, I was trying to figure out like why why this happened? Because I would expect that like, people's reading pattern are more similar when they perceptually simulate native speaker's voice and be significantly different from like simulate non-native speakers like voice. And uh, I think there are several possibilities here. The first one is about sub-vocalization. As you may all know, like phonological decoding of the words may help to, may help readers to access like the voice meaning as well as like the deeper information from sentences. And uh, that may be one contributor to to the effects here, and the other is uh, maybe if you ask someone to perceptually simulate some voice, no matter if it's native or not native, they, they just pay highly attention to the to sentences. So that could be one possibility as well. And the, the third part is I just wonder if that has something to do with working memory. So in the the latest test we. We change the, the, the photo prime into like a voice prime, so they no longer see, see photo prime, but they will hear the speaker's name before each sentence, like Susan Xiaofu. And uh, we just wonder if, like, maybe yeah, the effects will be different in the like, voice memory of the story here. Um, I was wondering if you have any plans to study like different types of uh, accents, like maybe different varieties of English, or European accents or Asian accents. Um, and even like, I know it's not a technical term, but like the thickness of the accent of someone, you know, is having a little bit of not speaking English. Um, and, or even different varieties of English, like Australian or uh, Yeah, sure. That's a very good question. And uh, actually, we consider about that. And 
the, so the next step is like the one I talked about. Like I change the prime of the picture into like the voice, mm -hmm. and then and also I'm running like L2 speakers on the experiment to see if their reaction would be different. I recruit the L2 speakers whose first language is Chinese speaker, whose the first the language is Chinese, and other L2 languages of different different first languages because I feel their perception towards non-native speech would be totally different because both of them would be non-native speech to them, the speakers to them. Yeah. It would be very interesting if we include like Indian accent as well as like Spanish accent. Yeah. Sure, we would definitely explore that. So some of the variables we were talking about that differentiate these two speakers, like accent, would be necessarily different between a non-native and a native speaker. But other ones like fastness or you know rate of reading could differ between two native speakers. Yes. So I wonder what you think would happen if you had say if you included say two different native speakers within um, that same design of experiment one. With the on parent like results as well as like other people's re uh, research results, I I would uh, assume that readers will read like the a native speaker with faster voice much quicker than they read like a native speaker with slower voice because of this kind of perception simulation could affect or modulate their eye movement. So faster reading time lead to faster reading time and the slower speaking rate lead to slower reading time. So you expect that, that native speakers would still pattern together simply because of the rate or because of the sort of whole group of things like extendedness that you, you have on that social scale? Um, I would say based on their speak, speaking rate because I, I feel their um, results for the social attracting, attractiveness would be similar except for like maybe the accent and the speed for native speakers because you may have the native speaker from the Midwest and the native speaker from the West Coast. The accent would be different. How do you think the, your subject's familiarity with the non-native accent would affect their results? Like, in yeah. terms of how it causes to be So if you're, so even, so if I have a lot of friends who are um, first language speakers of Mandarin Chinese, and I'm very, very accustomed to hearing Chinese accent in English, even though it may be a heavy accent, but if I'm very, very accustomed to it, do you think that my um, reactions on this test would be different from someone who was less accustomed? Yeah, sure, and uh, yes, I think that would be different, because uh, as we mentioned, uh, as we see in the functional attractiveness skill results, Actually, their attitudes towards the non-native speaker would affect their accuracy and reading time. And in that way, if they are more familiar with non-native speaker's voice, or more get used to like maybe Mandarin accent, like English speech, they would have higher uh, confidence or even higher trustworthy towards non-native speaker. And they would have maybe have faster reading time or like higher accuracy. And uh, we are. Right now, we are exploring that with the L2 readers. Yeah, but I, I think that I, I can see your point that familiarity with the accent should also be reflected in these um, uh, these social measures. But you should be able to tease that apart because presumably, even if the if it's a native speaker's voice, you still can have differences for different. I mean, in your study, you had only one native speaker, one non native speaker. But if you had multiple native speakers, and they might come out differently on these social. Um, uh, attractiveness factors, um, and so you should be able to tease apart the social attractiveness factor from the familiarity. <coughs> because I was thinking that in this test, if I were doing this test, I was trying to imagine uh, a sentence that I'm reading being said in a voice I just That would be hard to imagine if I wasn't very familiar with the accent, phonological and genetic patterns. Yes, definitely. That is why we have like two audios here, and we feel like if we just ask the speaker, like readers, to please imagine 
uh, Chinese accent speaker is reading sentences to you, we feel the impact may be not so strong, maybe not exist at all. So that is why the family randomization part is so important in this task. But I would think the same experience could all recall um, previous miscommunications or difficulties that someone might have in their experience with the non native speakers. So um, it could have a, the opposite. You just think of, at least I got the experience, you know, when you're calling the bank, checking your account and get someone from India or Singapore is giving you the information that you want. Um, so the familiarity might really recall the subject of previous experience. Um, understanding not really. They may already have like an active attitude towards like the public speech and uh, which will reflect in their maybe in their question reaction time. So that's in this was supposed to by non-native speaker, then it may take them longer to think about, like, huh, oh, wait a minute, what did you say? Like, I need to think about that because they're less, they feel they're less reliable and their information is less clear. And uh, actually, I, I see someone from the tribal, they did like, research like that. So what they do is they ask people to read statements by non-native speaker, and they found that people tend to spend much longer with like those statements, but they tend to have higher accuracy because they are more cautious in decision making when they hear non native speakers' voice. We're out of time. Thank you. Thank you very much. We're going to take a short break now. If you have any questions for the presenters, you can please ask them during the break. And we'll reconvene at 5 o'clock to be invited. Thank you.